Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Chris, and in this tutorial I'm going to teach you how to use an Android application called Desploit. Now for those of you who have never heard of Desploit, Desploit is a penetration testing suite for Android, and it has a variety of tools for network analysis and man-in-the-middle attacks. Now in order to install Desploit, your device will need root permissions, so if you don't have a rooted Android device, I suggest you go and root your device now, and then we can get started. So the first thing we need to do is open up our settings. And in the settings menu, we're going to find security. And in the security menu, we're going to find unknown sources. And we need to make sure that we enable unknown sources. So go ahead and tick the box. And then when you're prompted, go ahead and select OK. And what this does is it allows us to download applications from sources other than the Google Play Store. So you can go ahead and close out your settings. And now we need to download Desploit, so let's open up a web browser. And in the URL bar, we're going to navigate to http colon forward slash forward slash goo dot gl forward slash uppercase a uppercase m q two i uppercase t and then press enter. And you can see there the download has automatically began. I'm going to pull down my notification bar and I'm going to wait till Desploit finishes downloading. And the Desploit APK file is about six and a half megabytes, so it may take a moment to download. Just be patient. Okay, and you can see there that the Desploit APK file is finished downloading. Let's go ahead and select it. And when you're prompted, go ahead and select next until you're prompted to install and then select install and you can see there that Desploit is installing now before we can open Desploit we need to enable Wi-Fi and connect to the wireless network that we want to target so for right now I'm just going to select done and I'm going to close out my web browser and now I'm going to go into my settings I'm going to select Wi-Fi then I'm going to enable Wi-Fi and you can see there that I'm connecting to my wireless network which is Hackspot. Now that I finished connecting I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close my settings out and now we can open up Desploit. Go ahead and grant Desploit super user permissions And when you see the change log prompt, go ahead and select OK. Now the first thing that Desploit does when you open it is it begins to scan the network and look for connected devices. So you can scroll through this list of targets and when you find a device that you want to target, go ahead and select it. I'm going to select my MacBook Pro. And in the next menu, these are all the different modules. You have a lot of different network analysis tools like Traceroute, Port Scanner, Inspector. These are basically Nmap tools. If you scroll down, you'll see other things like man in the middle, and these are going to be a number of man in the middle attack scripts. The first thing I want to do is show you how port scanner works. So let's go ahead and select port scanner, and then we're going to select start. And this is going to begin scanning for open ports. You can see there that I have SSH, I have VNC, I've got a number of different ports that are open. These may be good to reference later if you're doing an attack from a different machine. Let's go ahead and navigate back to the module menu. And let's select man in the middle. Now you can see here there's a number of different scripts. One of my favorites is Session Hijacker. I find that it's very reliable, it works very well. So let's go ahead and select Session Hijacker. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna move over to my target and I'm gonna open up a web browser and I'm gonna see if I can find some sessions. Now to start Session Hijacking, go ahead and select Start. Now I'm going to move over to my target machine and I'm going to open up a web browser and I'm going to see if I can sniff some sessions. So I'm opening Safari and if you refer over to Desploit you'll notice that we have a YouTube session. I'm going to go ahead and select that session and start hijacking it. And when you're prompted to start hijacking go ahead and select yes. And this has brought us to a web browser type interface. and there you go, you can see that I am logged in to YouTube as Chris Harrelson. Now again, I'm not logged in on my phone. This is the cookie that it stole from my target machine. 
So if I want to, I could go through the video manager, I could delete videos, I could comment as that user, or do whatever. And the same concept would apply for Facebook sessions and other types of sessions as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move out of the session hijacking, I'm gonna navigate back to the session hijacking menu. Now if you want to, you can actually save this session and then restore it in the future. To do this, you'll long hold the session. You can give it a custom name if you want. I'm just gonna leave it default and then select OK. And to restore a session, you'll simply select this file browser icon at the top right. And it's gonna automatically find any sessions that are stored on your SD card. You'll simply select that session and then select OK. And that just restored it. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna navigate back to the man in the middle menu. Another fun man in the middle attack script is the kill connection script. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And then I'm gonna move over to my target machine. And you can see here that the web browser is working fine. I'm gonna to try to navigate to Yahoo. And you can see there that it's not taking me to the Yahoo page. This is because I used ARP spoofing, which stands for Address Resolution Protocol, to kill the connection. Now, if you wanna restore the connectivity, you simply select Kill Connections again. And if you refer back to my target machine, it will load Yahoo now. And you can see there that it's working now. Now, before I conclude this tutorial, I'm gonna show you one more man in the middle attack, and I'm going to use the script injection. I'm gonna select Custom Code, and it's already put some JavaScript in there for you. If you know JavaScript or you have some custom code, you can go ahead and copy and paste that in there. And when you're ready, go ahead and select OK. Now I'm gonna move back over to my target computer. I'm gonna open up uh, Firefox. And I'm gonna navigate to YouTube. And you can see there, there's our custom script. It says, this site has been hacked with Dsploit. So when the user clicks OK, it's going to take them, and then the same prompt is going to appear, and it's going to continually do that until they close their web browser. And then to stop the script injection, you'll simply select Script Injection again, and that stops it. Now there's a number of things you can do with Dsploit. I'm not going to be able to walk you through all of them. I encourage you to experiment with it. But for the most part, that's how you use Dsploit. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.